Paul Hewitt is spinning around. Let's say that by holding out the weights, he has a rotational inertia of, say, five. Multiply this by his rotational velocity, and you have his angular momentum. His velocity here is one round per four seconds, which is about 0.25 RPS, rounds per second. Therefore, his angular momentum is rotational inertia times rotational velocity, or 5 times 0.25 equals 1.25. Hmm. So, what happens to his rotational inertia as he pulls the weights inward? As per our earlier discussions, the rotational inertia decreases. It might divide by 3, going from, say, 5 to 1.67. You know, less of a radius means less rotational inertia. But here's the thing. Angular momentum is always conserved. Disregarding friction and heat loss, what you have before will equal what you have after. So if his rotational inertia is going down, what then happens to his rotational velocity? Well, angular momentum before equals angular momentum after, which is 1.25, and that would equal the new rotational inertia, 1.67, times the new rotational velocity. Solve for that new rotational velocity and you have 0.75 RPS. That's three times faster than the original velocity. Let's see if that's what actually happens. Easier. (laughs) Notice that while the rotational inertia goes down, that means the rotational velocity must go up, and proportionately so. Why? because angular momentum is always conserved. That's good physics. Easier to run. Good energy. Mm-hmm.